Okay, lecture 13, uh, the topics we're going to study this uh, lecture, uh, CGMP, uh, and then quality assurance control. And you probably studied these topics uh, already in the previous courses like CG, uh, Biotech 102 and 100. So hopefully a lot of these topics should be uh, reviewed for you guys. Okay. So first of all, CGMP, so good manufacturing practices. So especially good manufacturing practice uh, is a federal law, as you know. And so there's since so many, you know, incidents in the history. So the U.S. government uh, established the law. And then, um, yeah, so especially uh, since the Kiefer Harris amendments in 1962, um, U.S. Uh, government wanted to make sure that the pharmaceuticals that are sold in the U.S. should be safe and effective. And it is uh, the responsibility of the manufacturer that, uh, and then overseas by that, that manufacturer is overseen by the uh, government regulatory body like the FDA uh, in the US and the EMA in the US. Okay, I am the EMA in the EU, of course. I'm sorry. So the compliance to CGMP uh, is to ensure that the pharmaceutical products are meeting the following attributes CSPQ, we talked about it safety, identity, strength, purity, and quality. Okay. And especially the Code of Federal Regulations, uh, parts 210 and 211, uh, were legalized uh, in 1978. Okay, and then FDA inspection studied uh, to enforce their compliance after that. Okay, so although the law studied in 1963, um, the 210 and 212, uh, those two parts, uh, were legalized in 1978. And then uh, GMP is uh, enforced, of course, by the FDA under Section 501B uh, of the 1938 Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, of course. And if manufacturer is continuing a violation of CGMP standards, of course, that manufacturer uh, sh should be uh, prosecuted in, in court law, of course. And then and the international, okay, so the WHO, uh, the World Organization. Okay, uh, World, I guess, Health Organization, I'm sorry. So WHO uh, has uh, their own version of CGMP uh, that is uh, uh, adapted and used uh, by more than 100 developing countries. And then, like I said before, uh, European unions uh, have their own version of GMP um, and because they have own version of the regulation. Okay, so... Uh, so if, if you know, sell your uh, product to the international market, of course, you have to be compliant to the, all the requirements of the WHO GMP, as well as the FDA, and as well as the EU GMP uh, um, uh, requirements, of course, right? And then GMPs are current, because of that it has C in front of GMP, okay? That current means, you know, um, application of GMP uh, that changes as the industry changes. Why does the industry change? Because the science and technology advances. Okay? Examples are computer system, electronic documentation, barrier isolation technologies, uh, biotechnology med um, medicines, manufacturing methods, and all those things. Okay? And the adverse effects, product tampering, contamination issues, and, and Inspection activities and findings on the generic drugs, uh, poor documentation practice, lack of validation issues, and those things, as well as equipment advancement, automation inspection. So many things are changing all the time. So therefore, uh, it is CGMP uh, that always changes, and uh, your compliance should be uh, to the most current, most updated uh, GMP requirements. You have to be compliant to that. So uh, after the generic drug scandal in late 1980s, um, if you look it up through maybe Google search, yeah, uh, many U.S. Uh, companies had, uh, you know, uh, the U.S., uh, I guess, the manufacturers who are making the generic drugs, uh, they had a lot of issues because they were not testing their drugs before they put on the, uh, their, uh, their product on the market in the 1980s. So that was the uh, uh, generic drug scandals. Okay, um, FDA in, in introduced uh, pre-approval um, GMP inspection 
okay and before a uh, company is uh, apply, uh, applying for or submitting the NDA new drug application okay so the drug manufacturing facilities and processes should be audited visited by the FDA so, so the local and regional GMP compliance inspections will take place okay, before the NDA submission so based on that you know the audit FDA visit you know, if they will review the recommendations by the GMP compliance uh, the auditors, inspectors, and then they'll decide um, what things should be done, of course. The pre-approval GMP inspection requires manufacturers to finalize the manufacturing process with the evidence of validation of the process at commercial scale prior to submit submitting the NDA. So, you know, before FDA wants to review and give the NDA, of course, they want to see that if the manufacturer has the you know required uh, GMP facility and the validated process and trained employees and all those things. Okay. So uh, FDA visit, of course, you know a lot about that. Any visit, you know, at the end of the inspection visit, um, you know, the inspection result will be communi communicated um, through a form called FDA form uh, 483, right? 483. And then, so inspection team can write an uh, in establishment inspection report uh, that elaborates and expands on the inspection observation with the evidence collected. Okay, if the condition described in EIR are serious enough, then there will be a warning letter uh, that will be issued as well. So the warning letter may be <coughs> um, issued if the timing or con content of the company's response to Form 483 is not as satisfactory. So the first time you can get maybe 483, but the, if the company did not respond to that 483, the warning letter could be coming later on. Okay, so a warning letter uh, simulates voluntary, uh, stimulates voluntary uh, corrective uh, action. Okay, if you receive the uh, warning letter, of course you have to correct yourself. Okay, and establish a background for further regulatory action by FDA if needed later on that's the result and then both the form 483 and the warning letter are serious documents okay, that warrants a prompt and thorough reply so uh, when you receive the warning letter uh, you probably have a uh, short window of time about two weeks or the time whenever and company can respond to that you know form 483 but if that response okay is not good enough if, if it's poorly written then it may uh, uh, trigger a uh, uh, subsequent warning letter. Okay, if they would not like that, then they'll uh, send you a warning letter based on that. Okay. So if companies are in so much out of compliance, then, then what's going to happen? So if they can issue a consent decree, uh, that is what your operation shut down. So you cannot uh, manufacture anymore right? until uh, the conditions should be met. So, so to resolve the non-compliance issues, you know, if they can completely shut down your operation, probably you don't want that, right? So consent decrees are issued because of the recurrent failures. So if there, there are multiple failures happening at your facility, so most likely you will get that consent decree, the operation shut down. Okay, and the European Union, he used GMP compliance and, and sterile product inspection. So the EU GMP Annex 1 sterile medicinal product is the main GMP document uh, used by um, European Medicine Agency, EMA. EMA is just like FDA in the US, but that's the agency overseeing um, the FDA-like jurisdiction in the European uh, Union. Okay, So then EU inspections are primarily done, uh, it used to be that way before um, the United Kingdom, uh, I guess, uh, brexited it. I don't know how it's done these days, but you, United Kingdom Medicines and Healthcare Product Regulatory Agency, MHRA, were doing the inspection at the time. Okay, And then the International Standard Organization, ISO, represents about 160 countries all over the nation, all over the world. And then, um, but W, I mean, ISO is a non-government organization, and it's not, you know, um, I guess legally bound. So ISO has 
um, so many standards they developed, 17,500 standards covering all kinds of technologies and processes. But ISO standards have no legal authority on that. Um, maybe a country adapts those ISO standards for their legal process. Okay, so there are standards that you know uh, developed by uh, ISO, and those standards could be uh, used by many different countries. So let's talk a little bit about the different roles of the quality assurance and quality control. So, um, so both departments, QA and QC departments, are developed to you know, assure that the product that's being manufactured has the quality, of course, and it's safe, right? So um, the responsibility of the achieving in finished product is divided into concepts and practices and quality assurance, quality control. So, you know, both QA and QC work together to make sure that the product is uh, meeting the quality requirements, of course, right? And then uh, in terms of a QA, quality assurance department, uh, they uh, study uh, and then uh, made the plans and execute them and then all those things are done to ensure the quality of the product of course and then they have a final confirmation and final say uh, on the, if those plans and studies are well achieved or not okay also QA covers all the aspects of quality including quality control manufacturing and distribution and inspection of the products Okay. And then on the other side, the QC, quality control, uh, they are more of like a hands-on, kind of carrying out the plans in terms of like validating, uh, testing uh, the materials and doing the assays and things like that. Okay, uh, So that includes all the tests and evaluations and performing uh, to be make sure that quality exists in the processes and products. Okay, so the main difference is, uh, please understand, quality, uh, QA has kind of more um, kind of a control, uh, more regulation over the entire uh, quality uh, practices, but QC is more on the hands-on, on the testing and validation side. Okay. And then the quality system uh, means uh, the entire thing that's being done to ensure the quality. Okay. So have evolved from principles of QC, quality control, and the product, and the quality assurance. Okay, so the quality system includes everything that's done in, in, in the company and the manufacturing operation, of course, which will include document control as well as, as like a inspection, all those things. So then, uh, speaking of document control, what does that mean? So you have so many documents, documentations, right? Master files, okay, perpetual record of products on all batches of the product. Normally, master files stays with the QA, right? And the batch record, again, uh, the complete record of manufacturing, finishing, control, and distribution of a single batch of a product. It has all the evidences, documentation of a product batch, and process log, a logbook, so equipment record for cleaning, sterilization, calibration, maintenance, component processing record, and uh, filling ticket, um, labeling control tickets, product release information, all those things are considered as process logbooks. And then material logbooks, uh, complete inventory of uh, raw materials used in batch, in a batch, how much was used, expiration date, and evaluation period, and test results. So there are so many different types of documents out there, and then everything is controlled and validated. Okay. And then pre-approval GMP inspection requires a thorough document control system in place and accessible. And you've probably heard that so many times that most frequently cited problems by the FDA audit is the documentation problem, right? Because they probably will look at uh, the evidence of the quality and the validation. Mostly those evidence come from documentation. So understand the importance of documentation, of course. And then quality management system, QMS, it's a complete set of interacting uh, components that direct and control the sterile product facility towards the desired quality objectives and regulatory compliance. So it includes everything, as you can see, you know, customer satisfaction on one side, and the other side, uh, customer requirements, how do you meet those, okay, continuous improvement is one way of doing that. And, uh, flow of information, management responsibility, uh, ISO um, 
9, uh, 90,001, and the quality management system is part of it. Resource uh, usage, man, um, measurement, analysis, improvement. So everything your company would, would be doing 